As promised, uh, another update on the, on the driller progress. As you can see from the uh, from the viewing Godot, we've got uh, a lot of things changing here. I've got all of the main rooms in. I've put them into the shape of the map. It doesn't need to be in that shape, but it just makes it a little bit easier to to visualize and see what's going on. Uh, some interesting things here. You see, there's a lot more color now than there ever was. Uh, this is a consequence of um, bringing in proper materials. So I zoom in on uh, Amethyst, our starting scene, you can see we're actually bringing in colours. took quite a while to work out the uh, the, the uh, material order, on pyramids in particular. I need to try and speak to Ian or Chris and find out what they were thinking when they uh, when they decided on those orders. I'm sure there's some, some clever optimization logic in there that I just couldn't work out. So unfortunately the code for loading a pyramid is pretty brute force for each type of pyramid it, it sets the points and then sets the quads in the order um, and assigns the material so I'm sure there's there's a much better way of doing this because Chris wouldn't do this in in Z80 in the limited space that, that was available so we'd love to have a chat with Chris and see if I can work that one out but for now it seems to work um, in, important things like uh, these materials are all applying correctly and underneath is transparent and that, that was the important thing. So in, in the original uh, Freescape, it was really important to make polygons that could never be seen transparent because it obviously, um, the cost of drawing additional polygons that were never never seen was, was uh, prohibitive. So that just shows that it works. Uh, the couple of things uh, in addition that have changed, the, the, the rectangles in particular had some problems with uh, with collisions on these. So I've made the collision shape just a little bit bigger um, so that it takes priority for, for some reason Godot was was prioritizing collisions with this rather with the, the cube that it sits on rather than the uh, the, the polygon itself. Uh, I think I don't think there's any problems with that because I think in most cases um, collision type behaviors uh, are going to be for things like doors and so on so I think that'll be fine but we'll know once we get into uh, into playing through it a little bit more uh, what else so we've got all the scenes are laid out you can see that uh, there are polygons uh, rectangle uh, objects on certain sides of the scene um, that are made invisible this, this is all down to the materials handling again um, but this you'll also notice that there's some, a gap I've intentionally put a gap between each of the, the main rooms to, to avoid them being too close together and the reason for that is these polygons have code on to transition you across from one room to another now the go to command takes two uh, two parameters an area that you're going to so this would move from a, from amethyst to to nicolite um, and uh, an optional entrance. So an entrance is an object that you can place in the scene which has no visible uh, no visible representation but is used by the code to place a player at a certain place when they transition into that room. But when you're transitioning from these polygons on the edge, these, these objects on the edge, there is no entrance. So if we look at the uh, code on this, it's 18 which is go to, go to um, area 9, which I believe Nicolite is room ID 9, um, and go back, entrance 0, there is no entrance 0 in there, so the code has to try and work out what, it, what that means is, if there's no entrance, just take your current position and apply it as if you'd transitioned across the barrier between rooms, so if you're crossing, you're hitting this, this, uh, this object here from somewhere around here, it will place you around here. So there's some code in there that just flips the side depending on which side you've jumped over. And again, that seems to work, which I can show in a minute. But it, I had to separate these objects in order to avoid there being a conflict. So that if it tried to move you across, you'd actually then hit this one and move back again and then move back again and and uh, get stuck in an infinite loop. So shifting them apart a little bit just solved that. Uh, thinking what else has, has been done. I think that's that's mainly it. As you can see, we've got all of the rooms in here, um, and one one ed, one additional interior room. There are a few more interior rooms that I need to bring in, but this one's uh, operational at the moment, and that correlates to um, this 
hanger in Amethyst. So let's have a quick play and show you how this all works in reality. So you can see the colours look, look pretty good. The lighting's still good, but uh, as you move into these, these polygons now, you transition. So it basically makes all of the other scenes in the main area invisible and just the scene, the, the room that you're in visible. Um, and you can see that from here. So you would normally have been able to see Nikolai over there behind that invisible polygon, but uh, I hide them all to, to make it um, the same gameplay, basically, as Driller, the original where you couldn't see through. Um, so if I, if I walk into this one now, it will transition into that into that scene. I'll, I'll add a, a nice um, transition effect at some point. But for now, you can go over and it drops you where you, where you should be. So if I come over into this corner, it will drop you over into this corner of that of, of the new scene. So this is all, all working. We've got some simple logic on this switch over here, which is all working. I've only implemented four or five of the FCL commands at the moment, but uh, it's enough to make things like that work, which is quite gratifying. Uh, just go back quickly. Movement isn't fast enough, but uh, I'll fix that later. I think if we go through to this one, it has some interesting logic, which is which shows uh, some clever things that Ian managed to achieve with the extremely limited functionality of FCL. So this is a lift. You want to get up into this building here. Um, obviously, there's no animation, but uh, once everything is completed, I believe there's some logic on this lift that enables a flag or sets a flag bit somewhere in the system um, when you're standing on it that enables these two switches over here but because that isn't working um, the, the logic on this object isn't working the switches are fully enabled so if I click on this one it's basically it activated the lift and moved me up to the top and that's all done with just simply invisibilizing and visibilizing two objects, a lift at the bottom and a lift at the top, and shifting the player to an entrance within this scene. So there's an entrance here, and if I click on this one, there's an entrance here. So it's just shifting the player using um, go to, the simple go to command, to simulate the idea of a, of a, of a lift, which is very creative. I can't go into there because that's one of the interior rooms that I haven't uh, haven't created yet. I'm not sure whether you're supposed to be able to fall off, but it works fine here. Um, and this this uh, step here highlights a problem with the current uh, navigation and um, movement system. Um, in Freescape, you had a uh, a maximum height object that you could step onto, so uh, that would be, that step would be within the limits of the step. So you'd bang bang into it and step up onto it. Uh, and I haven't implemented that in the in this one yet, so you just bang into it. So can't go any further here until I fix that problem. But that's where I am. Uh, less than a week in. Quite happy with that progress so far. Uh, another update in a couple of days. Thank you.